Well, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Welcome to the Daily Bread. Yes, it is cold in our media room. And so instead of me putting heat on, I just grabbed a blanket. Amen. And so I am so excited about what God is doing. And today in our Daily Bread, as you know, we are going through the book of Proverbs this month of September where Solomon is giving us much nuggets on wisdom, knowledge, seeking after God, running after his knowledge, and not only that, but putting his words in practice. And so Proverbs is a very practical book. It is something that we can put to practice in our lives, and it's not hard, And but we just have to be, um, we have to be intentional when we are putting the words uh, to practice in our lives. So let's go jump in with Proverbs 6. We got a little bit over 33 to 35 verses, but I want to walk on through here because I believe that there are some awesome, awesome things in this book that you and I can learn from and change our lives. We are living in the last days. It's time to get with the word. Amen. And so we have some practical warnings in chapter six so let's get to it it says my son if you have put up security for your neighbor co-signing have given your pledge for a stranger if you are snared in the words of your mouth caught in the words of your mouth hallelujah then do this my son and save yourself <laughs> for you have come into the hand of your neighbor go hasten and plead urgently with your neighbor give your eyes no sleep and your eyelids no slumber save yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter like a bird from the hand of the fowler do not sign for anything if you have come if you are co-signing you become in debt because of because you putting your name on stuff the bible is saying don't go to sleep don't let your eyes close save yourself hallelujah it says Go to the ant, O sluggard, consider her ways and be wise without having any chief officer or ruler. It says she prepares her, breed, her bread in the summer and gathers her food in harvest. If you look at an ant and how an ant provides for their colony, they go and they get food and they bring it back and they store it up. And the Bible is clearly telling us to go and look at the ant and prepare. And how many know in this pandemic that we're in, and I believe that more is coming uh, than worse before. Uh, you know, you may have seen people looting and, and, and breaking into places and all of these things, but I believe that God is calling us to a place of preparation and listen at this, not only to feed our families, but I believe that God is going to use some people to help others that are in need who did not prepare. But this, this right here, this Proverbs 6, where this is practical warnings, the Bible is clear in, it, in the sixth verse where it's talking about, look at the ant. The ant don't have no chief officer, no ruler, no nothing. They are preparing their bread in the summer and gathering food and harvest. Why? Because when times come when you need it, you'll have it. Somebody say amen. Nine says, how long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? That's laziness. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want and want like an armed man. If you're lazy, you're not going to be successful. If you're lazy, you're not going to get the work done. If you're lazy, nothing is going to come to you. The Bible says that poverty will come upon you if you don't get yourself up and do what you got to do. 12 says a worthless person, a wicked man goes about with crooked speech, winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, points with his, with his finger, with perverted heart, devices evil, continually sowing discord, therefore calamity will come upon him suddenly. 
And in a moment, he will be broken beyond healing. Come on here. Anybody that is in your circle or if you are dealing with people that are integralists, worthless, wicked, and they, you know, they, they, they talk fast, okay, where you can't even understand them. They talking fast to lose you in the conversation, winking their eye and pointing fingers and confident of what they're saying and doing. You, you better know what you're dealing with because the, this is when the spirit of discernment needs to kick in when people are trying to get over and talk fast to you where you're not understanding and you're agreeing to stuff and coming into agreement with people and things that you have no business coming in agreement with and it says that if that person is continually to sow discord that calamity will come upon him suddenly so here is here is another example where even if you can't, you're not in the company of no one that's doing it. You need to do an inventory and make sure that you are not doing it. You and I need to do an inventory to say, God, am I causing discord in whatever it is that I'm doing? And if I am, show me so that I can repent from it because calamity will come upon you suddenly when you're sowing discord. 16 says there are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Hear this, haughty eyes and a lying tongue. The windows to your soul are very important. Watch what you see with your eye gate because what you see, what you, what you lay your eyes on, it, be, it begins to enter into your spirit. And then you begin to think on what you saw Move on what you saw. Be very careful what you lay your eyes on. God hates seven, six things. Seven is an abomination against him. And so we, we're we going to go, my um, phone, where I had my scripture is messing up. The devil is a liar. And so he hates hearty eyes and a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, you scheming, huh, and feet that make haste to run to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brothers. Are you sowing love? Are you sowing discord? Are you among gossipers and you're, and you're gossiping about people and making your feet uh, haste towards evil? Or are you so in love? Are you lying? Or are you so in love? And we talked about this yesterday some. And it's here again in Proverbs 6. It's a warning against adultery. And it starts in 20. And it says, my son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. <laughs> the word of God will talk with you when you are awake. And when you lie down, the word of God will watch over you. Come on here. For the commandment is like a the for the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. And the and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. You cannot live this life as a believer and not be corrected and not be reproved. If you cannot be reproved and corrected by the word of the Lord and you dismiss it, you are looking for calamity to come to your house to preserve you from the evil woman. The word will do it from the smooth tongue and adulteress. The word will do it. The Bible says in 25, do not desire her beauty in your heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. For the price of a prostitute is only a loaf of bread, but a married woman hunts down a precious life. Basically, Solomon's saying it's not even worth it. <laughs> Can a man, 27, carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not be burned? Because that's what you're doing. You're messing with fire when you're entering into adultery. 
You are, you are, you are totally out of alignment with the word of God. And Solomon is asking if you burned a piece of paper right now, if you burned a shirt right now and that thing caught on fire, can you put that shirt in your lap and it don't cause flames in your body? You can't or cause flames on your clothes. You can't. Or can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? Can you? So is he, so is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. None who touches her will go unpunished. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry. But if he is caught, he will pay sevenfold. He will give all the goods of his house. He who commits adultery lacks sense. This is simple. He who does it destroys himself. I know that, you know, there are some statistics out there that there are seven women to every man or 10 women to every man. I don't even know what they are, but I've heard about statistics when people are talking about couples and marriages and all of this kind of thing. Let me tell you this. I don't care what the statistics say. If you get on your knees or whatever position that you pray in and you ask the Lord for a mate, he will give you someone just for you. You don't have to be with somebody else's wife or husband. Come on, somebody. He who does it destroys himself. 33 says he will get wounds and dishonor. And his disgrace will not be wiped away. For jealousy makes a man furious. And he will not spare when he takes revenge. The husband is not going to care when he finds you. He's not going to spare your life. You messing with his wife. He will accept no compensation. He will refuse though. Hallelujah. You multiple gifts. This thing about adultery is serious. God is serious about it and it's an abomination. It is directly in opposition to the word of the Lord. And so I want to employ you guys that are out there today, you ladies, you gents that are out there. If you are being unfaithful to your spouse, let me tell you this. You might say it's because she's doing this or he's doing that. And that's why I stepped out. But no person can make you step out. Your relationship with your spouse should be a direct correlation with your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because there is no way that you can love God whom you have not seen and you can't love your spouse that you see every day. There is no way. Agape love means irregardless of what you do to me, I love you. And when you stood before the Lord and your family and that minister and made those vows, you made them to the Lord and to your spouse. So let me help you with this. When you cheat, you cheat on God first. And that should be your main concern. And that should be what keeps you faithful. That should be your foundation. That regardless of what my wife is not doing, regardless of what my husband is not doing, I am going to love him the way God told me to love him. I am going to be faithful to him. What? as unto the Lord. And when you are faithful to your spouse, as unto the Lord, nothing should separate you from the love of God. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory and I give you honor. I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you that your word, Father God, is not has not only come across as sim simplistic, Father, but it has come across boldly, Father God. And I pray, God, that we would take a hold of your word and stand on your word, flat-footed, firm, not swaying to the left nor to the right as you told us not to yesterday in Proverbs 5. But, Father, I thank you that we will hold on to your word like never before, and we will apply this word to our lives. I pray, God, for those that are in adulterous situations right now, Father, that you will 
heal them. Father God, that you will bring them out of those situations. Make a way of escape for them. I pray, Father, that they will repent of their sins, Lord, and turn back to you, Father. I pray for every man, God, that is being unfaithful to his wife, that he will turn and do what your word declared and love the wife of his youth, Father. And I pray that her breast shall satisfy him all the days of his life. Father God, touch your women today, Father. And I pray for those that are seeking married men, those single women, Father, that would prefer to be with married men. I pray, God, that you will touch their heart, that you will bring them to their knees in repentance, Father, and that you will show them that you made them good enough to have their own husband and leave others, uh, wives, hus other women's husbands alone. Father, I praise you. I give you praise and I glorify your name today. And I thank you, Lord, that your word, Father, will cut and it will reprove. For you declare that it will sharpen in any two-edged sword. So sharp, God, that it will separate the bone from the marrow. And so I pray, God, that your word will go out today, Father, to those that need you. Father God, and heal their wounds, heal their hearts, heal their marriages, heal their relationships, heal their families, Father. And I'll be mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, I pray. Amen and amen. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Proverbs 7. Be there with your word open and reading along with us as we continue to bask in the word of the Lord and get our daily devotions um, on the go and let God know that every day we put him first and him alone and he leads and he guides and we will follow. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. Keep us in prayer. You want to share this video, um, put your comments. You want to subscribe so that you can know all of the content that we are posting and we will see you soon. God bless.